Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I will be your gaming monk for the evening. Everything old is new again, and this includes titles I haven't used in months. Let me take you back a couple years. As an aside, I find it a bit weird that I have that kind of continuity. Anyway, back in July 2020, I talked about the esoteric RPG known as Black Void. I really liked it, but I will admit that Things That Are Different was a jab at those who have a very narrow view on what fantasy is supposed to be. I don't want to name names, but you know who you are. Anyways, I said at the time that I wanted to see the world expanded. And while there's been a few scenarios that are pretty good, what I really wanted to see is some version of a player's handbook or a gazetteer. Something that explores more of the fascinating world through a larger lens than a scenario can provide. Well, as the old saying goes, good things come to those who wait. This brings us to the subject matter this time around, Under Nebulous Skies, which is essentially trying to be both things I was asking for, expand the setting and give new options for players. And I've been waiting patiently on this since it was announced some time ago, and it's high time I put it in the hollowed halls of my temple. But before we begin, once again I need to provide a bit of disclosure. The creator, Christopher Sevaldsen, apologies for mispronunciation, has been a welcome guest in my temple, and I did back this particular book on Kickstarter. As always, that will not play a factor into my assessment. With all of that said, let's begin our dive back into the lands where survival is only the beginning. Now I know I talk about layout and look for books, but I didn't see the need to do that here. Just watch the layout section of my Black Void review, because I'd be saying the exact same thing. The only difference is that Nebulous Skies is 340 pages, as opposed to 424. That said, the majority of the book can be divided into three parts. Voidfarer's Travelogue, Player's Option, and Grand Campaign. We'll start with the Travelogue. This section is not one, but two gazetteers, essentially. The Kima and Daris sections of the Eternal City Lynn. Kima is an island district that could be Black Void's version of Hell's Kitchen. But I don't want to lower Hell's Kitchen to Kima's level. Necromunda might be a closer analog. Kima is a once lavish palace that's covered in shanties and hovels built upon each other to the point that it's a nightmarish labyrinth. Obviously, there's a lot of gang activity within Kima, as well as the entity known as the Beggar King and his court. Daris, on the other hand, is a river town that's a major trade port of the Eternal City. This is split between five areas, each with its own identity distinct from each other. These are the Stocks, a massive collection of ranches, the Forges, the manufacturing heart of the Eternal City, Shallow Water, a ramsackle place built shoddily on the islets and shoals of the river, the Warehouse District, which is exactly what you think it is, and the Wharves, a mishmash mercantile harbor with shipyards, booths, and headquarters of many a consortium. Essentially, Daris is a place where you can find just about anything if you know where to look. Both sections have sets of maps for the overall location, individual buildings, plot hooks, and NPCs of note. Now, the second major section is Player's Option, covering the player-facing parts of the book. Now, the core book's pool of options is certainly no slouch, but there will always be new ideas pitched. The text outright states that some of these emerged in playtesting and others were born from the Discord community. First, talents. There are a few new talents, primarily to even out the associated traits with less talents in the core book. Flaws are given the same treatment in the name of offsetting any disparity between traits and their flaw options. Backgrounds are also expanded with two subtypes presented. Ancestry backgrounds, which can be used to make mixed heritage characters instead of the human standard, and detrimental backgrounds, which provide certain drawbacks outside of flaws. Ancestry backgrounds range from 3 to 12 points, and may grant a set of features as well as potentially modify the minimum and maximum ranges with the character's traits. Detrimental backgrounds do grant character points, but at a range of 1 to 3, and the book suggests putting a 3-point limit. God knows we don't need any more min-maxers. Attributes are also expanded, but it's worth noting not all attributes are for PCs. Some of these are meant more for NPCs when creating new species and or creatures. Unless the GM grants approval. I'm not your dad. Esoteric attributes also get some expansion for those with the void-marked background or certain ancestry backgrounds. 
Now, originally, the void sphere of mysticism was mostly used for navigating the void. However, here we have a few more options, in particular metaphysics, i.e. understanding the pat patterns in the environment, as well as reading auras and discerning properties through essence. The skills section doesn't offer any new skills per se, but what it does offer is new specializations for a lot of the present skills. Combat skills also get new specializations, but they also get a new skill with projectile sling. The final part of the player's option is equipment, with a grab bag of new weapons and variations of existing weapons. Plenty of them getting their own art, which is nice when a lot of these weapons aren't ones that people would be familiar with. Along with other forms of goods being added, this section pays special attention to the construction and modification of void vessels. These are much more expensive than a standard ship, since it requires hiring out a specific artisan to get one made. In other words, a void vessel is as much of a work of art as it is a ship. A few visual examples are given, but it's worth noting that construction of a vessel typically uses a ship as a template, as most void tears happen over water and void varying parts at a multiplier to the base cost. Now the third major section is the Grand Campaign, which is a large adventure split into two sections that's meant for four to six characters, with a character point range between 48 to 68. While it can be played on its own, it can also be played as a continuance to some of the other scenarios that are available, like previously covered Dark Dealings in the Shaded Souk. Additionally, there's recommendations throughout for the Arbiter in regard to skills or abilities that might be best used in certain scenes. While a lot of the things I like about Black Void scenarios are present here, I'd say this campaign is an efficient crash course into the themes present within Black Void. Now obviously there's a lot I skimmed over. I'm not going to go through a 300 page book in the page by page detail. But there's plenty that's packed into this book for both players and GMs. While I'd give Under Nebulous Skies a stamp of Strongly Recommended, I'd say that pairing this with the core book is absolutely essential. That kind of pairing could also make a good intro for the kind of game that Black Void is, since by focusing on the parts of the Eternal City instead of the greater world, there's something to build off of. Besides, neither one of them could be said to be lacking in content, and that's something I will always approve of. Stay frosty!